Okay, ignore that. I'm just started uploading the uh, the previous recording to this one, so we're gonna get back into working on things. Last video, we just finished abstracting the GUI opening call, so that way they're more dynamic. We can uh, control how the GUI opens from the tile that owns the GUI and not from outside of it, which will allow a lot more dynamic handling on how these things do their return button. So if we go here and we hit return, it does that as well. We got rid of the encoding section here, which we can see over here on the command controller that the, it has the encoding button. So for this video, we're going to, I guess, just start converting more tiles. So the, the next set of tiles that really could use a conversion are, I want to say the AMS turret would be the next really ideal one. So we're going to go ahead and uh, hit that one up. So we'll go ahead and close all this out. Uh, actually, let me go ahead real quickly check to make sure I don't have to sync. Yeah, I do have to sync some code real quick. So this will be interface changes. Almost neglected to upload my code between videos. Not that big of an issue, but oh well. And then, yeah, look at all that code we changed in a matter of like five seconds. So this will be uh, interface changes and implementation of dynamic GUI opening calls. Really important to make sure that when you uh, get a chance to upload your code, because for all I know, this computer could crash in like the next five seconds and I lose everything. Um, oh. Weird. Apparently, I got hit by a merge conflict here. Uh, it's really easy to fix. Actually, it's not a merge conflict, it's just a merge. A merge conflict would be if when I go to hit pull, it would not fix. You would just get a red error, and then you'd have to go through and have the fun. Luckily, it's just a normal merge, and you just have to pull and then push. Uh, wish I got a heads up from Nemod on that, but uh, I'm guessing he's under the assumption that I'm not up right now. Haven't exactly been talking to people in the last couple days, so I, I can see why. Communication is important, and I'm just not doing it. Okay, so we're gonna work on the AMS turret. So what I'm gonna do is I'm pretty much just gonna flat out remove the AMS turret from the current version. And what the hell is this? Oh, I have debug on this thing? For those of you who don't know what this actually is, this is an actual Java JFrame, which means if I open the game and I launch this, and I was debugging it, I would have a separate window that would pop up that I could sit there and I can look at everything the turrets are doing. This is an old way I used to do debug and uh, it needs to just be removed actually. So we're going to get rid of it. And we want to just phase out the AMS turrets and we want to start utilizing the Armory's uh, turret system. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and convert it to as a sentry gun and we shouldn't have to do anything else for it. Just get a crafting recipe and stuff. So come on the content, and we'll just make a new thing called AMS. We could actually make a separate mod for this. We could make a mod which is just called Anti-Missile Systems, and then we could just start putting all of our stuff in there. You know, I actually, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete this real quick, and we're going to make a new mod. Uh, let me just quickly take a look at uh, what we have. Uh, I'll just probably redo the recipe to be honest. Uh, there's nothing special here, just iLinkable. We keep track of our FOS stations, so we need that. So we need to get provider for F tag. And we just need to get his friendly. And then there's an FOF station thing down here. Uh, this needs to be reworked. We'll convert the FOF station too if we got time. The FOF station is really not too complicated. It's just a lot of uh, packet calls. GUI opens. Um, apparently, this has the permission system on it. There's not many of my machines you'll find this, that have permission system implemented. This one actually is set up so that way, I think only the owner can edit the FOF station. Um. Hmm, how to implement this? So 
So I think we're going to drag the FOF station with us to the uh, anti or anti missile mod. So we're going to probably do that. So we're going to we, what we need to do is I need to actually go ahead and open up GitHub. This would be what do we call the last mod? So it was like century something. So let's go find it real quick. So it should be like a century mod here. It's probably under ICBM. ICBM Classic Sentries. So there's no specific name for this, so we're, there's no naming format I need to keep track of. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a new repository, and this will be uh, century.aa. Um, Submod of armory that adds anti air and anti missile sentries. And we'll initialize with a readme so we can go ahead and clone it. And we'll hit clone to download. And then let me go ahead and actually I don't I don't need the folder. I need this actually though. So I'm surprised it didn't actually throw any errors up. I must that must have not been implemented. We'll need a new repository. And then this is I think 1.7. Slash and I think it's armory is how this is labeled. Go find it real quick. So armory mod, but then there should be, yeah, it's armory add-ons. We're keeping track of these like they're single block mods because that's pretty much what they are. They're really really small mods that contain very minimum content that are very specifically goaled towards certain things. That's how all the armory add-ons are going to be. They're going to be very restrictive to what they the content-wise. So you'll have a World War One era mod, then you'll have a World War Two era mod. Then when we get the modern weapons, it may be by manufacturer. Uh, probably going to dodge a lot of the modern weapons just because I think there's a lot of laws that uh, are weird with those. Uh, what we're going to do real quick is we're literally just going to go and we're going to copy everything out of this package. And we're going to dump it in here. Let's get this file. Okay, we want to get rid of that. And we need to just go through into the Gradle properties and rename a few things. Um, I think we're good on these. This is what does need to be changed though. So we're going to leave this as century and it'll be century dash AA. And then we'll go down here. It's pretty much the same thing except uh, group names are lowercase. And yeah, we don't need to touch anything else in there. And settings.gradle, we just got to change it in here as well. Actually, I can get rid of that part and then I can just do that. We're working on still getting rid of some of these parts here, but uh, Gradle scripts are a bit complicated. And then we want to go in here and we want to, yeah, we want to rename a few things. This will be, Century AA is what this will be called domain package wise. Hopefully we don't have conflict with other mods over that. Let me make sure I, yeah, there's no localizations there. That's the thing, we haven't finished the ICBM Century mod yet. I need to go do that, but uh, right now I need to make sure I get rid of all the... Uh, old textures and stuff. Um, yeah, we'll get rid of the old textures. We'll make a new ones here real quick. Okay, so that should be everything. Now we just need to go into the content package and then uh, do the same thing. So this would be Century AA. And then we just leave everything in there. Okay, we go back out to source, Java, com, build broken, ICBM century, and we're just going to rename these is what we're going to do when we load it up. Uh, hopefully we don't get a conflict uh, error. So get file, project structure. And then plus new modular next import. Problem with this is I'm probably gonna have, we'll go ahead and hit refresh even before I finish scrolling up because then it'll it'll finish reloading. There we go. Pick this. And then what we we'll do this will be mod dash armory dash AA century or century dot A. Remove that. And then we just need to make sure that uh, we ensure that the packages are the same. 
And we got to make sure the source paths are marked correctly. So this is a source. This is a resource folder. Then set our dependencies up. Our dependency is Armory. It's the only thing we need. And then that should pop up. And then all we got to do is come down here and hit uh, refactor, rename, uh, rename directory. And this would be uh, century.aa. Unfortunately, when you rename things, IntelliJ goes through this whole hissy fit where it's going to be slow for the next few minutes because it actually doesn't understand that, what you're doing. It, it's like, oh, you renamed a package, so we're going to rescan every single package and rebuild our entire hierarchy. You can see it we're doing that up here with a little wind, pinwheel of death. And the fact that any action you execute will be slow. Actually, if I kill Minecraft off, should be a little faster. There we go. Of course, we're going to rename this. This will be... Century AA, then we gotta just redo our domain. So our domain is Century AA, and everything else should be good. We don't have to change anything else. We don't have to literally do anything with the entire class, it's a placeholder. Uh, we do need to update our date here. So the, today is the 23rd. And same thing for here. Because technically, even though we copy these classes from another thing, they, we did create them today. Um, and then we just need to start working on stuff here. So we need to do a new placeholder real quick so we'll just call it placeholder and then we're going to have a new directory so we'll have ams and we'll have a new directory fof we are going to have logic for the fof so we're going to need a new package here called content but we won't need uh, any logic for anything else i don't think at least yeah because I'll, I'll go and I'll reprogram the sentry guns to be a linkable logic, so they'll keep track of FOF stations and everything else. Hmm. I have to think of how to do this. Uh, we don't need the container anymore. We really don't need the... We do need to make a targeting selector, so we need to do an is-friendly thing. Um, which means we need to rethink how we're going to do the FOF station. So... I gotta figure out where the FO station even at, is at when it comes. Oh, it's just just down here. So this is not important whatsoever. And then let's take a look at everything else here. So yeah, we're gonna be converting two tiles at once. That's gonna be fun. Um, container is empty. GUI pretty straightforward. GUI settings. Oh, yeah, that's right. The FO station has two sets. Okay, so we're gonna close all this, and I want to just pretty much take this entire package. I need a placeholder up here, so I'm going to do it real quickly and make a new package info. Package infos are great placeholders if you just need to do something quick. Put this up here. Factor. So this is going to probably error out. Yeah, it's going to error out. Okay, so we don't need the item block. We're going to hold on to this because this is where we're going to do our render code real quick. And we need to handle our GUI opening. But our render code is pretty straightforward, so we can just copy that from stuff. Um, this stuff is pretty straightforward. Yeah, we don't need anything special. Uh, we do need to go through here, we need to remove everything. Hopefully everybody doesn't get really bitchy and stuff and be like, oh, you removed an item from ICBM. It's like, I did warn you guys when I made the AMS certs that it probably wasn't going to stick around. Oh, but we're going to need an interface thing here. So we're going to need to put that interface into Volts Engine API. So this will be thrown into the tile pretty much. Apply this tile, supply an FOF tag to be shared, so just be just friendly, get FOF tag. So we're good there. Uh, we just need to change our imports here. Probably should have fixed the imports before I did everything else. So it'd be IFOF provider. Good thing is, I can just do this real quick. Select this, replace, replace all. And like that, we're fixed. Um, so this whole friendly thing selector is not going to matter. 
Um, so we're going to need the sentry guns. We're going to need an FOF system. And the FOF system will pretty much only be used for AA-based stuff. You're not really going to use it for ground-based things because a ground entity is not going to have an FOF tag on him. So there's going to be no friend or foe system for that. So we need a separate system for that. But we can go ahead and set these up. So how how is the current AMS tree set up? Also, I need to really quickly edit the server proxy and remove that. Which means I need to go to it here and I need to get rid of the AMS system and the FOF station. I don't know why those two were separated from each other. They're basically interlinked and they should be in the same exact spot. Get rid of it here. Yes. Get rid of that. Here we go. Creative tab. Yeah, get rid of those two things. Okay, so we got to do some a lot of rendering here. Got to do a lot of a lot of things. Uh, important thing right now is so we want to we want to fix the uh, sentry gun real quick get it set up to have a uh, AMS system on it. That way we aren't losing a lot of things. Uh, so it's iLinkable. Yeah, so we don't really need to do much. So we just need to go iLinkable. And then we just need to keep track of an FLS station. So right here, we're just going to copy these. And we're going to put this pretty much here. This will be IFOF provider. Okay, actually, we want uh, this whole thing here. And yeah, this is going to be a mess. We'll go toss this stuff at the bottom, though. So it's a little, it's out of the way. Tile low control max link distance. IFOF provider. Um. There are two paws in this at least. No. Shoot. Gonna have to make a distance method, I guess. I can I can do something cool here. So require coding, I know, we'll not do that because the demon will get all pissy at me for having update coding live for like the 15th time this week. Um, why, why are we checking distance right now? Because there's definitely a distance check inside the AI scripts. Get aim point, get target, get distance. Okay, we're centered to distance two, so that's how we're going to do it. So center distance to pause. is less than uh say you can link up to 200 and we'll go to do uh place in static var with config reminder to change that later and then all we got to do is in our entity selection setup so we just need to go into our is valid target And there we go. That'll basically make sure that we can actually set up properly to uh, target things. All we gotta do is just start making targeting scripts for this, which is something that's on the list anyways. And we do need to save our FOF position, which is pretty easy to deal with. Let's 
Let's write the byte save. I think, am I doing the save script here? No, this is the load. And if I says just at all. I think that's all we need. And we just got to make sure we get uh, this stuff set up correctly, which is the only thing we need is these two parts in the name. Um, actually, it's not going to matter because no matter what you do, it's not going to update correctly. Uh, I need to create a fake tile. trying to think of how to exactly do this because we're going to have a missing block is what was going to happen. So we're going to have a missing block ID. Um, on top of having a missing block ID, the tile data is not going to load. So you're not going to load your ammo. I may just have to bite the bullet on this one and just take the heat for removing something without having a backport for it. I'll bite the bullet on it. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna have to look at this circuit. Circuit this. That recipe sucks. I'm making a new one for it. Okay, so delete the AMS turret. Delete. Yeah, we'll go ahead and delete uh, all of this. I'm gonna hold on to the client for a few seconds, so I just make sure I get the uh, some of the configurations here. Uh, we don't really need any of that. What we do need is I need to come down here and I'm going to copy these two classes, put them down here. Um, yeah, so we'll have to rename this. This would be century.ams is what the name will be. And then we'll do the ID the same way. And then we just need to re rename this. So we control R to century A. Looks like saw. There we go. Um, for ammo type. Trying to think of how we're going to do the ammo type here. What is a Vulcan fire? So I'll do this real quick. Um, Unit cost, weight, barrel, height, shell, armor piercing, thugstein. Fires a 20 millimeter shell. Wow. 20 by 100. Okay, so. We're just gonna call the ammo type that 20 by 100 millimeter. And uh, clip is the reload type. We don't need clip size here. Actually, to be honest, the reload type is box, but clip works the same. We'll edit the rate of fire thing. Gun type, gun. Sentry. Yeah, I don't really care to name this stuff. I'm going to hide all the sentry guns off the creative tab anyways in a bit. So what we just got to make sure is the gun's unique to this turret. Uh, we're going to have to edit all these values here. 
set the offset to zero by default. Uh, barrel length is definitely not that. I think it's actually 0 0.6. Body height is going to be 0 0.8. That'll work. We'll set the HP to 40 because this is a really weak turret. Uh, we'll leave gun smoke as the round fire type right now. And we'll leave the gun empty sound effect in there. We'll have to come through and do a lot more than that in a bit. For the render, we got a bit of replace here. So this be AMS. Replace all. Replace this with Century AA. Then we just got to replace all these. So this would be. Replace all this with AMS. And then we got to provide an item texture, an actual texture, and a model. Um, for the model, the model part's going to be real easy because we should already have a model path. I just got to drag the AMS model up into here. Same for its texture. I think that's all I need. So this texture is literally just called AMS in full caps. Not very inventive. But, I mean, it works. The fortunate thing, we actually apparently have two models for the uh, this system. So we got a top and bottom. I think I actually asked for that, even though I think it doesn't matter anymore. As long as the, both the models are center pointed, I think it functions. But that means our first model is AMS dot bottom dot obj and then our second model is this so we have ams uh, bot and we have ams dot top and we'll have to set up the renders for each of these we need to drag the uh, fof station model over too Delete both of these, so delete that folder, delete that folder, get the textures. Uh, it's not the computer, F with console. I think I need both of these. We'll just drag them in there and we'll drag again. There we go. We'll do that in a bit though. First thing first, get the sentry gun running. Well, actually, not so much get it running, just get it set up, because we can't test until we get uh, everything working. Okay, so I need to translate the top. I don't need this anymore. Okay, so for the render, luckily that's th things set up already, so all I need to do is to find the yaw and to find the pitch. There is no base on this since the entire body twists with the AMS dirt. Um, we're gonna have to do the entity. The entity is gonna be a layer file. Uh, shoot, it's gonna. Be... We'll, we'll come back to this later. We're just gonna make the item render for all all the item states, and we'll hit this up later. So we don't have a parent. We're gonna be rendering only a single thing, and we don't have a part list. We don't need to worry about part lists. I uh, don't need to be worried about that. So we got our IDs. Now we just got to find model IDs. Okay, so for the yaw, we want to render the bottom. And then our texture ID is just AMS turd. Okay. And we're just going to duplicate this down below, so we just have to change this from that to the top. 
and this needs a translation, so it needs an offset of y 0.5. I think it's everything. I think we're going to have to do some rotation, but um, I'll hit that up when we get to that point. Uh, but this is everything, I guess? Yeah, pretty much. Render type setup, data setup. This is the reason why I want to move the center gun to that, or the AMS turret and ICB into that, because then when I go to update newer versions, I don't have to keep updating a lot of extra code. Because the AMS turret, or the center gun in, I, I, in the Army mod was based off the AMS turret, and the AMS turret was based off the classic sentry turrets. Uh, at least partially, not fully. I did actually rewrite the AMS turret from scratch. I should have done that, though, because it I did take me more time than I should have. Okay. So now we gotta do the FOF station. So for this, I'm gonna go down to ICBM. I'm gonna copy the silo real quick so I don't have to recode everything from scratch because the FOF is gonna reuse a lot of things. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get rid of, and we're gonna redo the render from scratch here in a second. I want the multi-block code, but I do not need the whole thing. And I need to redo all this stuff. So this needs to be replaced with Sentry AA. And then we need to replace everything that says small silo with FOF. Actually, what is what is the FOF station labeled as? Uh, we have to go to this to figure that out, though. Client proxy. What was your name? ICBM XFOF. Wow, okay. Grabbing the missing mapping of it real quick so I could just rename this tile. Um, also, this will let me... So let me make sure that when we go to load... So it's ICBM X O F O F. ICBM X F O F. And we're just going to call this Century AA F O F station. Okay, so we're going to need to reset this. Everything else is good. We don't need to change anything else. We don't need to change the rotation. Multi-box good. Uh, missile render needs to disappear though. I don't need that. Everything else is good though. I need to close this. I don't, I'm not using it. I keep thumbing it open. Uh, so we can try... We're going to have to figure out some way to remap the ICBM AMS turret and make some attempt to reload it properly. Trying to think of how to do this. I got an ideal. It might work. So, FO station, and we're going to make a new package really quick called uh, remap. And we're going to call, it, uh, call this AMS. And what we're going to do is this is basically going to be a dummy tile that we're going to recode data with. So, we don't need any listeners for this. It has no render bounds. Um, we are going to grab missing mapping from this. So this should be AMS. Then we're going to re rename this to uh, AMS uh, Remap. Replace all. We don't need the multi-block. It's not a multi-block structure. And let me just double check to make sure that's the right name. Yeah, AMS. So this will this will remap to the AMS remap, and what we'll do is we'll create a tile that is designed to just quickly report everything and deletes itself. 
So inside content, we're going to make a really quickly thing and make a new package. We're going to call it remap as well. And we're going to make a new node. So this would be node, AMS, or AMS remap. We'll lowercase it just so it's easier to read. It extends uh, tile node, implements create constructor, uh, tile.remap.ams. And this will be century aa dot domain and then we'll have a public void first tick override super dot first tick to do remap we'll have an at tile wrapped and this will be uh, class name equals tile wrapped ams remap and we'll take this toss it down into here and we'll rename that and we need to go grab the actual package guess where it's going to spawn at uh, we'll have to create um, some kind of system for this because we need to make sure that we run everything I probably have to go work on the code generator after this to make it run uh, on all packages so I don't have to keep making a new code generator every time. But what this will do is we'll do on first tick. So we'll, we'll load up some data. And we're going to need to read a write method. So we're going to, there's, gonna, there's a save and there's a load method. So we're going to have to load our old information and then deposit it into uh, our, our new tile. So this will be uh, set, this will be world.set block x i y i z i and this will be armory dot block sentry and then we'll go and we'll get the tile at the location because as soon as we set this this tile's dead it's gone so to be tile entity tile equals world dot get tile entity at x i y i the z i if that tile doesn't spawn i got a way to fix that And we go if tiles instance of tile sentry. Yeah, that's our thing here. And we want to basically get the sentry again. So to be um, Taz. No, my dog's being annoying because she smells food. My brother's cooking and thinks I have food now. Taz, no, I don't have food. I'm sorry, I don't have food. Oh, well, this is going to stop the dog from staring at me. Taz, no. Okay, the dog has been baited away. <laughs> I found a can of Pringles on my desk. Not the most ideal thing to feed of a dog, but I think she'll at least leave me alone for a few minutes until I can finish the recording. Um, okay, so we need to get the tile. We got the tile sentry. The sentry is going to initialize with uh, no data. So we're going to have to set some data for it. So we're going to have to know what the sentry class is. So we're going to have to get that. So we're going to have to go tile.set sentry stack. Um, and we're gonna have to make a sentry stack. So we're gonna have to know what the AMS Turt sentry stack is. This is complicated because there is no real way to get this. Um, so we're gonna need to make a public static here. So public static sentry data AMS. And then we need to make another one called public static int. AMS meta. Uh, we want to go if uh, AMS equals null. We're going to have to find it real quick. So we have to go through all of our sentry data. And there's a way to do this armory data handler dot instance dot get sentry. We can straight out just get the sentry key, but I need I need the I need the uh, meta. 
So we're going to have to go through the metadata entry map, and we're going to have to find the thing. Because there is no reverse map of this. Actually, you know what? C can we just make a reverse map? If I made this a bi-directional map, I could do it too. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to do this real quick, and we're going to actually just initialize it with the data we need. So we're going to go E to integer. Because there's been so many times where I've needed to get the meta from the entry that it's been a little dumb. Okay, so we want to see where this is initialized. Oh my god, that's a lot of spots. So there's items.add, add, add, get, init. So just do this real quick. Huh. So we're going to do this real quick. So public void put. And then what we need to do is int meta e entry. And then we're going to do, we're going to replace all of these with a put call. So anytime we see that, we see a put call, we're going to replace it. Not a lot of these, actually, surprisingly. That'll work. Then we can reset this back. Uh, there's probably going to need some testing here to make sure this works right. But we'll go meta entry dot put, and this will be meta dot entry, and then we'll go entry to meta dot put entry meta. And then that way we can iterate over this properly. Actually, how do we get uh, we get the variable in the first place? Where's our get method? Super dot get hash map. Oh, we already stored string in entry. Okay. If we just made this a bi-directional data object, we probably could actually store it that way. Or we can... Oh, I feel stupid. This stores meta. Control-Z everything, I guess. Okay. So what we need to do is just get the AMS object. And that's it. So we would go this, and we would go... Uh, and then we would get git. And then I just need to get the ID of the AMS, which should be Century AA AMS. And we just have to cast it. And then we just want to go, um, well, I guess not fail necessarily. I want to go if uh, AMS doesn't equal null. So we want to hold on to our data. So if something fails here, we want to make sure this doesn't break the game. Um, so this would be new item stack armory dot century block one and then AMS dot meta. That's how we're going to set the century. Uh, this will get us by. At least you won't lose the turret. Uh, the ammo will be lost right now, so we have to still do. Um, so we're going to go to do load ammo to do load FOF station link. So we'll, we'll come back to this later and we'll have to test that more because I'll have to come up with a test map real quick to make sure this works and then I'll have to go make the map outside of this and load it in and toy with that. Right now I just want to get everything working again because the reality of this I kind of want to not spend a huge amount of time just trying to convert stuff back and forth. Okay, so we already started on FOS station converting it. Uh, we just need to do the hardness and stuff now. So it should be hardness and resistance. And we're, I'm just going to copy these and we'll just edit them when we stick them in here. So. I'm 
Man, it's got a pretty high blast resistance to it. I guess it has to because they're designed to take hits from missiles. Uh, what else do we need out of here? Okay, FO station has inventory at two. We're actually not going to worry about that right now. But, um... Hi, GY Ty. I might have host. Uh, we don't care about this anymore. I profile container. I post in it. We don't care about posting it anymore. Packet in it's going to be handled by the super, and this is going to be changed to tile node or tile machine node. And we're going to get rid of this. This needs to be changed to external inventory. Uh, we don't need this anymore. We don't need this anymore. Okay, this needs to be changed to git host, uh, git packet for data. By the way, the FOF stations may be supported via cart, so they may be one of the few things I actually end up doing cart-wise. Um, same with the AMS turts, so you can have AA turts under cart tra trains. I know a few of you people will probably be entertained by that. I don't know when we're going to be doing carts, though. Uh, do packet GUI. We're just going to do this real quick, and I'll handle this in a second. Uh, we're not storing the username by default, so we're going to have to do that here. We have a lot of stuff we got to do. Oh, there is a IFOF tag. We're going to have to figure out where that disappeared to in a second. It's probably in the uh, ICBM API. Okay, we don't need any of the multi-block code. It's all going to be handled via the listener. So, goodbye. And uh, we're going to have to re convert the recipe. We'll do that later. And this needs to be changed to save. MBT tag compound. And then we want to return MBT. And this will be load. So I'm missing just a few little pieces here. And then we need a constructor, to, of course, to do that whole thing we just added in the last video. So this would be just FOF. This would be tile.fof.station. Do the whole dot thing so I don't need spaces. And this will be century AA dot domain. Uh, we don't need the breaking thing. We don't need the structure map. For the quick import clean. Oh yeah, so that is in the uh, is in the uh, ICBM package. So it'd be down here, ICBM API missile applied enemies FO tag. So this needs to go into the Volts Engine API. There we go. And then we just got to import it down here and that'll clean up a couple errors. And then we just got to start storing username and then uh, user ID. Come on. Control L, or no, it's uh, uh, Alt, Enter. There we go. Um, container FOS, so we just got to go fix our container real quick. Which insists we're in I inventory. Uh, you know what, we're just going to do container dummy real quick, because we, we really don't need this container. Okay, we're going to have to copy some stuff from the FO of client though. So we don't need this, so I'm going to delete this, goodbye. And this is going to be changed to container dummy as well. Okay. Uh, shoot. FOF dot git host dot git packet. Okay. 
And this is probably the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. So this would just be FLF. Okay, that's fixed. Uh, we're just going to comment out the recipe. We'll come back to it later. And we just need to store the username. Um, this might be something I store on all tiles. So we're actually gonna we're actually gonna do that. Uh, just give me a second while I go hunt down the class I want to put it in. So I want to put it in this thing because we just want to go. Okay, we're gonna tell the host to store this this junk for us. Um, it's a bit easier that way, I think. Nah, we're gonna put it in here. Protected uh, string. What is it? Uh, what is it looking for again? Username. It's looking for owner too. Yeah, one's a username, one's a UID. So username and owner. So username protected string owner. Or this would be UID owner. Uh, I need to go to the tile class and I need to copy the handling for this out of it. So this will be in the tile class. All tiles keep track of their owners. So this would be, yeah, there's some read write stuff that needs to be added. We're probably going to packet rate these two. Because it is pretty important to know what your username is. Of the person who placed you in where, oh yeah, here's the save stuff. So this would be load. If we go back to the tile, then we'll get the save. So I'll save those real quick, and then there is some placement code that we're going to need to handle. Which means I actually just need to scroll up a bit and just do this. And then hit B again. Yes. Get profile, get owner. Runner helper class, I guess this will this will work. So we want to go put this in our our node system. And our node system is starting to get crowded. I I wanted to move to the node system to kind of avoid all this junk, and I kind of just brought it all back in because well, it's needed. Yes, yeah, so I do want to put it at the bottom down here. These are actually wrapper calls. Why are these? Is there helper? Uh, they're helpers, but they're not helpers. So this is the this is packet data stuff. We're gonna we're gonna clean this up real quick while I'm at it. So this is packet data. Or this would be packet helpers. And then these are wrapper calls. Okay. And we need to go back here and I need to see where set owner is called. So right here, and it's just on place. So we're gonna have to add a listener here and then set that up. So this will be handled here. And then I need to implement I placement listener, and then I need this method, which I believe is identical. So, yeah, it's pretty much the same. The only thing that changed was these, and that that means we, it wasn't really that important. But we need to make sure that's there because then when you place whoever places it becomes the owner of that tile. So that's pretty much what that's there for. And we just need to make sure the FOS station is actually calling the proper things. There's actually methods for this. There's a get owner ID, get owner name. Uh, we got to generate a new here. 
load group set this trim this is even used I can just change this to an object or I tile yeah that'll work Cool. So generate a new profile group. So FO station is pretty much converted now. We just got to make sure it has all of its post calls and stuff. The only thing I think it probably needs is we need to update this piece right here. The rest of it I think we're good on. Except for the inventory. I don't know why we have an inventory. Just like return null maybe or inventory with zero size. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn an inventory to zero size and hopefully that doesn't break the game. Okay, so now we just need to pull in a few different things. Uh, we do need to bring this up into the FOF station. I do need to test a lot of this stuff server-side too. If you didn't notice, um, we haven't been doing server-side testing at all. And I have not checked to see if what we're doing is going to break or not. Why are you bitching? Because no. you're expecting to have the client version of the FO station. I don't know why they're both the same. Probably was my brain was going, hey, let's be smart. Let's do this fancy thing that is not necessary at all. Um, we need this. This needs to go up there. So wherever we put our packet junk at, <laughs> yeah. We missed a bracket. Yep, there we go. And then we just need to put this down here. Change this to an else statement. And there we go. That transfers over our packet handling code so we don't have to worry about that being left out. And then we just need to copy these and that. Oh, thanks, bro. My brother actually brought me food for once. Okay, so this needs to go here, go there. There's apparently some has profile cache. Which, um, not sure what's used for, probably in the GUI somewhere. We'll just put a note here, uh, client variable. We'll look up what it does later. And this will be get host, uh, get packet for data. There we go. And we need to do the same thing down here. Last thing we need to do is just translate the render code, which I said we're going to rewrite from scratch, but yeah, we're just probably just going to go over here and junk some uh, copy data from something else. So their content ID is FO up station. So we just need to copy this, go into our render here. Content ID. Place everything that says SOFOS with this, so we got our system here. And then we want to get rid of uh, the top differentiation, place all, and then same with the bottom. Place all. And we're going to render 3D in the inventory, so we don't need a separate uh, texture for a lot of this. We only have one model, which means. I can get rid of this really quick. Uh, we don't have a separate yaw thing, so it's literally just this, just tile. So we can get rid of this bottom part. Uh, we'll have to do the other renders. Looks like it's a bit of a mess here. 
we do have different rotation values, so we're going to have to handle that. But we're going to do our base tile real quick, and then we'll handle everything. Um, we need to go up by half a block. We don't have to worry about the centering because tiles are already pre-centered. But it looks like this one needs to be increased by a render bounce. So offset, and then it will be y, 0 0.5. And then we need to just kind of copy this real quick and then set up all our different rotations. So north, south, east, west. I have to do the fix the rotation on everything, so we're going to have to do that. And then our parent is, of course, tile. Uh, now my dog definitely knows I have food and she's gonna sit here and whine at me and want the chair. So we're gonna have to make this quick. <laughs> or she's gonna try to ninja my food. Let's see. So now we just gotta do the rotation on these. I'm just gonna go to the small silo and just copy. Well, actually, I don't know if I can copy these rotations. We're gonna put some faith that these are correct. They're probably backwards. But uh, it shouldn't be off by too much. Okay, so what is our north? Our north, which is our default, is 90 degrees. Really quickly, we're just going to copy this down on all these. That way we have the variable set up. Okay, so our west is 180. And our south is negative 90. And in some reason, our east is our default, which either tells me the model setup wrong or something's wrong. Uh, so we're going to definitely have to adjust these. But that should be our render code for this, so we can just junk this entire class. I'll do the inventory translation separately because these are not going to work with the new system because I believe the new system defaults on some of the rotation values. Uh, but if we hit build, everything should compile now. Okay. Say run and debug. If we get it at least in a running state, I'm going to call that it for this video. If it's uh, actually it's going to crash. Give me one second. I got to fix something. Uh, run, edit configurations, duplicate, code generator, AA Sentry. Oh, this is dumb. This is why I said I need to go fix my, uh, how this is set up to run. Because this needs to be set up. Actually, we're just going to pop this out like this so I can edit it quicker. Okay, needs to be there. Output file, pretty much this, except we just change main with gen. Actually, that was it's set up. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good, good. Okay, I'll hit apply. And then I need to go to our Minecraft Lite client and make sure we add, add that to the run list. Uh, run another configuration. Hit apply. And then I need to make that folder, so. And then file, project structure. Hit apply, good to go. Uh, and then I believe I need to make sure I set the new tiles to be correct. And I also need to apply, actually we're just gonna close all this real quick because I don't know where things are at. So I might as well just close everything and reopen it all. Okay, so at tile wrapped, class name equals uh, tile wrapped FOF. Okay. And then you need to grab this. And this needs to be edited into the FOF station system. So this needs to be replaced here. Then I need to copy the package. I need to make sure the AMS, or not, not 
Yeah, I think it's the investor we're working on, on the other thing. So, it, yeah, we, we updated that. Okay, that's good. Should work. Shouldn't crash. Uh, I need to do file project structure. And actually add this to my run, though. Okay, should work. In theory, fingers crossed, etc. If it crashes, it doesn't work. I'm going to call it for the video, though, because I got food and it's getting cold. Turn my fan off on my desk for the last few seconds of this, I guess. Apologies, you guys can hear that through the video, because I, I need to work on adding some filters to my recording st software and stuff. I'm thinking about just running the audio recording through TeamSpeak. TeamSpeak does an amazing job at pre-filtering audio before it syncs it, recognizes it. And what I could just simply do is set up like a virtual audio cable system or plug my headset into a completely separate computer and do something with it. I'll figure it out. Then again, if I get some virtual audio cable set up on my computer, there is this software I can run that will pre-filter my voice. I just got to get it all working out. Now, if I get the virtual audio cables running as well, I can uh, actually just go back to using my professional microphone. But the problem is, is the audio is so quiet on it. I might as well be whispering. Okay, I know what's wrong. We missed uh, a step in the setup. Yeah, we missed a step because IntelliJ decided to do something stupid and delete both of those. Refactor packages like Presto. We're going to edit your code. Okay. Should load now. And we'll put a lot of more AA guns in here. So we're going to, right now will be the, the base AMS we'll put in here. After that, we'll do the missile launching AMS turret. And probably flat cannons. I'll come up with a list of things we can put in here. And all I got to do is get some models. I'll probably have to start modeling a lot of this myself because my, my modeler, Morton, is just, I, I think he, he's been busy with a job or something. I'm not sure what's up. I mean, his life is his own, so I'm not going to poke him back at it beg at him to do stuff. I'm just going to be like, hey, if you got free time, help me out. If you're not, I'll just do stuff myself. I'm still looking. I'm, I need to start uh, actually looking to hire a, or an artist. I don't exactly have money to pay hourly, but I can pay per project. Although I, I do have a decently high expectation. Not like super high, like I want AAA mo game quality models, but I do want things that are above what you would do with a 101 class. Ah. Failed. What did we fail on this time? Invalid ammo type. Ah, we uh, did not make the ammo. We're probably going to go through and update the ammo for the sentry gun mod, and we're probably going to share that ammo across all of the armory mods. Because it would be pretty dumb if you had to use a unique ammo just for those turrets. So we're going to have to modernize them. Okay, so I need ammo type. This would be 20 times 100 millimeter. And that's what the ID is going to be. 20 times 100 millimeter. Or we're actually, we're only doing the type in this class file. It's a bullet. This will be owned by the Armory mod. And the ID is literally that. And we just need to make a bullet. So we're just going to copy the 9mm real quick. And we're going to call it 20 times 100mm. Uh, we're going to only do one type right now. So it'll be whatever the damage type of the ICBM sentry turrets will be. 
Uh, my brain will put two to two together here real quick to find where this is at. So the damage on here is, you know what, we're just going to copy this and drag it over here. Um, so the name's going to be, well, yeah. Uh, 20 to millimeter dot basic. And with this is what we can actually do is we can claim this as an armory ammo type only. Um, we just need to make sure the ammo type is 20 by 100 millimeter. Value is eight on damage, and it's impact. Um, and what basic will be is you're firing pretty much a lead bullet. So you have to hit the target to do damage. With, with missiles, it's gonna be pretty bad. Uh, it's gonna be high miss chance. Luckily, we don't have to worry about any of that. What we're gonna have to do we're gonna. I'll, I'll come back to the ICBM Sentry mod and I'll, I'll redo its ammo later. So this should be loadable now. And it looks like we're gonna have another one of those long videos. I'm trying to trying to reduce these down, but development's not exactly a linear thing. It's not something you go from point A B to C. As you notice, I went to point A B, then went to something completely different, then something else, something else, then eventually got to the D, then had to go back to C, then to E. And it's there's no easy button for things. When things are developed, they're kind of meshed together. Uh, you could think of development more as a spider web, especially when you're doing object-oriented languages, there's more spider web driven. Um, even functional languages, which is things like C, are kind of spider web because you've got method calls and you got structures you're calling back and forth between. Uh, so you got even though the, the program executes in a linear fashion, your way your code is designed is more like a spider web. You've got different branches you can go to, different uh, classes you'll go back and forth between. Um, functional doesn't look as much as a spider web though. Object-oriented languages do spider web a lot more because they have a lot of interdependencies between each other. It's the reason why they use a lot more RAM too. CPU, not so much. People like to dog on Java for being really CPU heavy compared to other languages. Uh, it's not as efficient. It does keep up though. And in some cases it actually surpasses. It just depends on what you're doing. Every language is good at a very specific set of goals. Java is amazing at cross-platform, is amazing at being easy to develop with. I haven't exactly found another language that is easy to understand and work with. And the main thing that actually makes Java so easy to work with is the uh, integrated development environments like IntelliJ and Eclipse are just so easy to work with. I, I open up like uh, Visual Studios, for example. Visual Studios is not exactly user-friendly. They didn't design their system to be easy to work with. Um, so if I'm a Java programmer going to using it, it's actually really hard for me to use because they don't have any similarities to each other when it comes to how you interact with them. I mean, they have the basic similarity where you type into them and you have the project navigation menu, but they don't have a, uh, something like packages. Instead, they have like folders and it's really hard to navigate and find your way through things. And we crashed. Okay. Model format exception. Rendering format model AMS AMS top file not found. We uh, we didn't didn't, uh, didn't update the thing correctly. We probably did that down here too. No, we didn't do it down here. What did we what did we screwball? It's got to be well. I mean, it's it's definitely the AMS because that's one that actually errored. Did we? No. Why? Not that this render would render correctly anyways, but uh, neither of the renders are actually gonna render because we, we're missing um, a line, but... Okay, I'm confused. Render inventory item, tilo, tile, tile, silo interface client, Oh, 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 hold on. That, that epiphany moment you're hearing me say or do is, uh, the FOF stuff is still used by ICBM. So we're gonna discard these changes. Okay, we're missing. Okay, so AMS stuff. Okay, so we should be able to run now. 
I forgot the the silo interface. It actually still uses that um, that model. I actually took a bite of the food my brother made me. He made uh, short grained rice, ham and cheese burritos. Black Forest hand to be specific. Although it's that pre-packaged stuff you buy at Walmart, so it's not exactly the most best tasting thing, but they're pretty good. Especially when I haven't eaten much. Lately, my only food consumption today has been uh, chips out of a Pringles can. Speaking of which, this Pringles that tossed at my dog, she didn't eat. Oh well. She used to like these things. I don't know what's up with her. I mean, they're not exactly bad for her because they're just basically potatoes and salt. So at least the good thing about Pringles is they're not they're not filled with a whole bunch of extra junk. Yeah, the ingredients literally on here: dried potatoes, vegetable oil, corn oil, corn seed oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil. That's got some detergents. It's got oh yeah, it does have some corn flour in it. Corn starch, rice flour, monodextrin. I don't know what that is. <laughs> they just got salt listed as salt, and then they got wheat starch in here. So I guess it does have some flour in here, but it is mainly dried potatoes. I actually did a chemical breakdown on their um, a Pringle before in a chemistry class. It was fun. They are almost entirely potato. I think they just use the wheat to kind of hold the potato together. I'm not sure exactly how that works. I don't know how they make it. I just know what it is made out of. I also did a breakdown of a Lay's chip too, but uh, I don't remember what was in those. Come on, don't crash. No, crash. Bugger. File not found, AMS top. Why are you trying to render? You know what's going on? Uh, it's the render engine failing. It's uh, it's this. Okay, so AMS needs to go away. Why isn't this missile mag using its own texture? Whatever. Uh, we can get rid of a lot of these. These are a lot of these aren't loaded or used anymore. So get rid of these. Get rid of these. Get rid of the portable launcher. Get rid of the standard launcher. Probably have, we're probably using the small silo model still somewhere. Uh, yeah, missile mag uses it. So that means the missile mag actually does not have its own uh, texture set and model. It's actually just recycling the uh, model from the. Which is weird. Should be using the same model. Maybe I had more than edit the model or something. I don't remember. I need to start actually keeping much better track of things I'm doing. I mean, I have a, uh, a journal I actually write in and it, write stuff into it, but it's usually like five lines per day. And it's usually like broke things, did video, played games. Occasionally I'll write more in there depending if there's things I need to keep track of, like I ordered things or something. I gotta do much better, better track of that because to be honest, since I'm actually a, a proper business now, I've been told by a few people that I gotta keep really detailed logs of everything I do and well, I'm not doing that. That's a bad thing. I'll get in the habit of it eventually. Just like I'll get in the habit of doing invoices too. That's another thing. Man, running your own business sucks actually. And I, I'm just doing freelancing stuff right now. I can't I can't imagine how bad it's going to get when I actually uh, do a game studio. Which is my plan to uh, eventually get to. The, the plan is by the end of the year I want to be uh, an official game studio. I want to start actually getting employees... Well, actually, I don't think I'm going to get an employee by the end of the year. That'll probably be in the next year. And for those of you who are thinking I'm, I'm going to offer a random job hiring, I actually already have a list of people that I am going to hire. More than likely, some of the first people I'm going to hire is probably Morton, who's my artist. Right now, he's got a, uh, a job as a computer guy, and then he's an actual programmer, which is most people didn't know to that is he actually has a degree in programming, yet he does art. So I would hire him as both because I know he can program and I know he's a really good artist. Which is really valuable when you're doing a game company, you want to get people that are multi-talented. At least when you're doing an indie game company. 
Uh, when I get to the higher level, it'll be a different story because at that point you're just hiring raw talent to get as many people as possible. Okay, so yeah, we're rendering that, that works. We should have a new tab here. Tab is probably being shared. I probably messed up the tab. Okay, I'd messed up something. Okay, so we do have an AMS turret, and if we place this, it's not going to render because... Oh no, wait, never mind, they rendered. I didn't mess up that bad, I guess. Hmm. Um, yeah, we need to stick ammo on this thing. Uh, we don't have any clips, so this thing isn't going to reload, but uh, that's good. And then I need to find the UFO station, which is... Yeah, I'm not going to find. How did I mess up the creative tab? And also, I need to really quickly AMS turret and... I don't know why I left that there. No, no, wait, 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 that needs to go back. Or does it? That is about... So that's one, that's about three pixels tall, so one, two, three, four, five, five pixels. Yeah, okay, so we need to bring it down by 0.3, so this will be two, and then we need to do like negative, some negative value for this, negative 0.3. Okay, that'll fix that, and I'm not going to like sit here and just do the whole update thing on video, but uh, we're going to call it it for there, and I'll be back with another video.